they were really they really became popular in the 14th, 15th, and 16th century uh, when a lot of this technology kind of emerged from Italy. And it was it came from a defensive strategy. This is why they are one of the spiritual planetary defense systems. They're one of these networks, they're one of these fabrics, basically. They were designed in a way in which mimicked or represent celestial geometric blueprints. Okay, so they could go from a pentagram formation all the way to an octagonal or even like a 12 dimensional, like geometric star code within the, the architecture. So they're building like geometric walls, architectures around their forts. Some of them are forts, some of them are around castles, some of them are around buildings they may want protected. But it was because in war, like they would shoot cannons and they would like, you know, bring forth military or infantry. And so if they really wanted a building or someplace protected, such as like a military base, they would create that architecture around it so it's harder to be penetrated by the enemy, so to speak. Um, so you know all all knowledge, all information really has descended from source, is descended from the higher intelligence fields, is descended from the celestial bodies. I mean, even when we talk about the human soul evolution of the human spirit, I mean, this was descended from star beings. So um, I really think this knowledge descended from the celestial systems themselves, star beings themselves, star cities and star civilizations, essentially. And they are um, to the star seed. So if you are encoded within your DNA blueprint as a star seed, you've awakened to that you know, antennae and all of the interdimensional abilities, star forts are star temples to you. So if you were to access a star fort, that's technically like entering a church <laughs> or a mosque or like a, a, a holy center in which it is an energetic portal that will give you access to celestial intelligence fields through the design of human architecture, which is really incredible and amazing that we have that ability. It shows how galactic we are as a human species that, you know, we're designing stuff like this that allows us to portal into celestial consciousness. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's truly incredible. Like they're truly amazing structures. There's probably over 300,000 of them, like all over the earth. I mean, we have a ton of them here in the United States. So this is a very celestial activated land and it makes sense. I mean, we're the country of freedom and, you know, popularity and, or whatever. We're a mixed bag of a bunch of crap, but like, <laughs> that's probably why. studying spiritual planetary defense systems which are organic spiritual systems in which protect the earth against the fall of man programming against the diabolical dooms in the event that um directed energy weapons or you know man-made weapons of mass destruction get in the <laughs> eventually has gone into that reversal spin entirely i mean these are systems that activate that protect the earth and so the network of the star forts is a defender grid structure in the planet it's a built-in network in which humans have subconsciously and unconsciously built um not realizing that we have you know installed this into the planet that there's so many on the east coast that i think it's kind of a it's it's definitely a defense frequency fence installed on the east coast to protect from negative energies from the scattered radiation grids the polarity grids the mutation grids 666 wormholes all of the you know negative mechanics and beast machines that are basically you know running through different places and locations the bermuda triangle whatever you want to call it but i mean it is a, a defense wall whether it's come through the tactics of war but it's also permeating all the way through the celestial realms because this is going into galactic consciousness basically i think this goes back to atlantis and i think this goes back to tartaria i think these were architectures oh, of tartaria. That's amazing. yes have in mind i think the tartaria civilization was timeline modified by the particle accelerators from atlantis um, and also from our timelines. So I think they've been using 
like particle accelerators to basically try to delete the knowledge of Tartaria. I think it's the one civilization that's been the most attacked in terms of its existence, knowledge about it when it when it was here when it wasn't here how it slipped into the timelines like all of this right like it's kind of one of these civilizations in which have been targeted by the dark forces and i think it's because they hold a lot of future technology to the star cities that are supposed to come on the earth um and so they have been modifying you know us to try to forget Tartaria. Anyways, they're doing that through weapon systems in the planet to augment the electromagnetic organic frequency fences to create more amnesia within humans, basically to destroy the ability to remember. Um, <laughs> that goes into spiritual planetary weapon systems. It's like a whole deep. This was a good question. I figured we could take a couple questions. So if you guys have questions for Indy, you can put them in the chat. This one's from Earth Sign. She says, Indy, do you see the return of Lemuria? I think that was sparked by, you were talking about um, the, all the water stuff. So that made her think of Lemuria. So do you see do you see that in grid working? Or do you see that like in the timeline? The return of Lemuria? You know, I did see that in the timeline for a while. I do feel like that vision is subtly changing. Um, I have lived in a world of an archaic revival of Lemuria taking place. Um, I don't know if Lemuria will ever entirely come back, but I do feel that we are bridging ourselves into a new world that will hold components of Lemuria within it. Um, kind of like a base fabric um, in which the original creational designs to the lit the land of Lemuria and to the existence of the human soul body from Lemuria will thrive um, in what is being built in the trajectory of a 7D earth and higher. Okay, so um, I think that it is a part of the future timeline, but not but it won't ever be Lemuria entirely again. What do you so, think it'll be some other version of it? Like I, yeah, I think it will be another version of it. Um, I think technologies from Lemuria will come back, like golden light cities and golden healing temple technology. I think um, priesthood and priestesshood will come back. Um, I am concerned about the degeneration of the human genome and species, though, that, like, we're not going to have the original Lemurian, like, genotype, like, come back. Like, I don't think that can entirely be restored, but... Um, I think that there will be, you know, the seventh root race will probably come into play. I think these will be more um, South American types. Um, it's, it's said that this, the seventh root race is supposed to be born from like Brazil, um, like, like South America, basically. Um, that and also Middle Eastern. So it's going to be kind of a convergence between South American genome types and Middle Eastern genome types. That's really what's going to kind of take over um, the new Earth races. Um, I think it's one of the more stronger survival dominant lines that we'll be able to uphold in those timelines. I think that they there will be bridging systems and portal systems to the higher heavens. Like the higher heavens will be more integrated into the reality. So things like star forts will be architectural designs in the new Earth cities, in the new Lemuria that's coming, basically. Um, we'll have more temple designs, more future designs, more technological, spiritual designs of what the new Earth buildings will look like. Um, there will be star cities. So instead of star forts, we'll, we'll have star cities eventually. You know, cities that are more celestially powered. Um, yeah. There's a lot coming in the future. I mean, we still haven't even gone through an AI technological revolution yet, so we we have a long ways to get there. And you think we'll all, we'll see all this in our 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 lifetime? Like, we'll we'll. Well, I think we're dreaming it awake in this lifetime, so we're still connected to it. Yeah. Yeah. I teach about all this in my upcoming course, uh, Grid Work Facilitator 2.0, and I'm basically teaching how to become a grid work facilitator yourself, like all of the methodology to do this work from beginner levels to advanced. 
Um, I did already teach a grid work facilitator one back in at the end of 2022, beginning of 2023. And now I'm just doing the next one for 2024. It was like a very requested course teaching that people want to know about this stuff. So star forts will be one of the class modules. Um, also, what else are we doing? We're going to be teaching about the spiritual defense systems, uh, planetary uh, weapons and modification systems. Um, and these terms are very big, right? These are big terms. Like what the heck is, what is this stuff she's saying? It basically breaks down into multiple categories underneath each one of those things to understand the dynamicism of it. And it's basically the, the pillar work in which the facilitator or the grid worker needs to understand to evolve within this technology. Because as a facilitator, you're gonna be guiding group remote missions and you need to know what's in the planet. You need to know what's there in terms of what are your opposing forces? What is built in the earth architecturally in which you need to work on to restore the land codes? You know, knowing what the intent of the grid work facilitator is, which is basically an avatar land shaman. You know, someone that has almost about ascended master codes, but those codes and certifications to work on the earth. You know, not just other people. So it's, 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 it's really a cool course. Like it is for, I think, the spiritually awakened person who's ready for the next level of something. Um, you know, it's not the basics. This is very expanded knowledge. Um, not saying somebody couldn't take it if they were like newer to it, but it, it would quickly um, upgrade and advance their intellect and ability to see fourth dimensionally, holographically, it definitely upgrades your remote viewing abilities. All of these are qualities in which you really need for powerful grid work facilitatorship, but, but they develop in time. And this is the spiritual technology that allows those things to develop a lot faster. You can definitely jump right in because the first half of the facilitator two module is geared towards kind of going over the basics of what was taught in one, which is the main things that people need to have, you know, to accelerate. And then in the second half, we will go into like the advanced technological planetary systems. But yeah, anybody can join at beginner levels we will cover multi-dimensional levels of understanding. The videos will be downloadable and there will be replays available so you can go back and watch and study it multiple times if you need to. And, and honestly, that's what a lot of my students tell me is that they need to go back and watch it again because everything is so rich with upgrades and information that multiple watches do recreate new awareness every single time. So it's really cool. It's a full on live webinar format. So there will be live Q and A. I'll be active with every, all the participants. It's kind of the best time for someone to come work with me more personally, to be honest. I know it's kind of in a group setting, but I think people really, really like my one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I function really well in group mentorship. So it's just kind of a way for me to give more to more people at one time, considering the burst of information coming for me is like, it's so vast, right? So this is like years and years of my studies being given 